remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. genius Travis Cook back with you once again and there's one thing that I've noticed the media not really talking about this weekend uh, in the uh, in the run-up to the Michael Sam situation he's the football player the gay football player that got drafted by the NFL team the St. Louis Rams this weekend the media's talking all about that story but there's one part of the story they haven't mentioned and I think it needs to be brought up you know you guys probably are aware you probably, it probably didn't surprise you that I run in some pretty conservative circles pretty socially conservative circles I'm also around a lot of football fans an awful lot too. So not only face to face, but in terms of my social media, like Facebook, Twitter, internet, that kind of thing, it's mainly comprised of socially conservative people and football fans. That, that's an awful lot of my online footprint, if you would say. And I noticed something interesting about the reaction to the Michael Sam situation this weekend when he was drafted in the seventh round of the NFL draft. I notice that the reaction of all of these socially conservative people that I know, all these Christians I know, all of these uh, football fans I know was essentially, okay, if he can play, he should make the team, and if he can't play, he shouldn't. That was it. There was really no backlash. I didn't hear hardly anybody say anything to the effect of, well, he's gay, so he shouldn't be allowed to play football. Didn't hear anybody say that he should be barred from entering the draft. So I didn't hear or see anybody put together like a petition to keep him out of the NFL draft, keep him out of the league. Nobody said he should be fired. Everybody just sort of said, okay, I disagree with him. I don't like what he does. But if he can sack the quarterback, he should make the team. If he can't, he shouldn't. In other words, treat him like every other seventh round draft pick out there. Okay, so not much backlash at all. Seems to me like it's a fairly tolerant reaction by people who you know, really would not be necessarily uh, have approval of what he does or, or what he's chosen for his lifestyle but in terms of doing his job if he does it they're fine with him if he doesn't if he doesn't then okay get rid of him like you would anybody else pretty tolerant reaction hopefully the way we would react to anybody else now contrast that reaction that I saw from very conservative people socially conservative people Contrast that to the reaction that was out there when Phil Robertson of Duck Dynasty was asked a question by a reporter about what his religion believes about homosexuality. And Phil Robertson answered that question as honestly as he could. And the reaction to that was, we got to run Phil Robertson off of television. Oh, there were petitions that people got up to throw him off the air. A&E tried to suspend him. They brought him back. But... You know, all kinds of people just tried to end Phil Robertson's career right there. That's not very tolerant, is it? No, 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 no. And remember that uh, bakery here all back that that said, hey, we'd really rather not bake a, a wedding cake for a gay couple. And instead of just saying, okay, we'll take our money and go to another bakery and buy a cake there. No, no, no. They tried to, to get him get him thrown into court and shut down their business and force him to bake a cake and run him out of business, whole thing. Now, did that sound very tolerant? No, that wasn't a really tolerant reaction either. No, not at all. What about those two guys, the brothers on, I guess, HGTV? Is that the network? They have like a, a kind of a landscaping show, I guess it was. And uh, they're, con they're confirmed Christians, conservative Christians and everything. And they, uh, you know, they, they made some comments stating that they don't, you know, that they don't approve of homosexuality. Oh, they get thrown off TV. Everybody says they got to be thrown out. That we can't have them, we can't tolerate them. Boy, that doesn't seem tolerant at all, does it? Now, what I'm getting at is this. The American left, and specifically some people in, in I guess, the gay movement, if you want to call it that, the self-proclaimed leadership of that movement, they're constantly preaching tolerance. How we must tolerate their lifestyle, we must tolerate them. We can't obstruct them, we can't deny him employment we can't deny him this we can't deny him that we got to tolerate them well it seems to me by looking at the real world we conservatives we social conservatives we christians we are tolerating them we are tolerating them rather well not that we agree with them not that we approve of what they do but not just in the michael sam situation but just in our daily lives 
you know, we interact with gay people every day and many other people that we disagree with, but by and large, we tolerate them. We don't stand in their way. We don't try to deny them a job. We don't try to, you know, get them fired from the job they have. We don't, we don't, we don't try to do anything unless it gets to a point that their actions infringe upon us. But up until that point, we largely don't care. You go live your life. That's what I'm seeing out of social conservatives in the Michael Sam situation. So I see out, out of social conservatives every day in the real world. But man, we don't seem to see that from their side, do we? Oh no. You know, if Phil Robertson publicly advocates for his lifestyle, we gotta throw him off the air. If the two brothers from HGTV, if they advocate for their lifestyle publicly, we gotta throw them off the air. We can't have them anywhere near the television. Someone might hear them. There really is no tolerance from their side, it seems to me. And at the end of the day, I have to wonder if tolerance is really what those leftists and those in the aggressive gay community, if tolerance is really what they want at all. Or are they just using that word and instead they don't want tolerance, they want validation from the rest of society. It doesn't seem as though it's enough for the rest of us who disagree with their lifestyle choice to say, okay, I don't like it, but as long as you don't infringe on me, whatever. That's, that's not enough anymore, evidently. Now it's got to be that we've got to pat them on the head and say, not only, is, not only am I going to stay out of your way, but it's okay. It's good that you do that. Like we have to now turn our back on our own principle. It doesn't make sense, but it's exactly what we're seeing. You know, I, I did a show a couple weeks ago about racism where we talked about how there's a new racism out there, that racism is, is no longer about saying, oh, uh, you know, blacks can't do this or Hispanics can't do that. It's, it's not that at all, because you never hear that. It's instead racist if you don't believe that people who are minorities should get all kinds of special treatment. If you, don't, if you don't think they need a handout, then suddenly you're racist. We're seeing the same thing in the gay movement now. It's not enough to say, hey, I tolerate him. Hey, I don't stand in their way. Now, it's like there's an expectation that you've got to give them all kind of, of special treatment and special consideration that it's not enough to tolerate them you now have to celebrate them they don't seem to be celebrating us very well hey tolerance is a two-way street if that's really what you want but we're certainly not seeing it and let's keep one thing in mind here they we taped this show here in the st louis metro area and that's where michael sam was drafted and the local reaction to this here has been like just what i said earlier that Football fans are saying, hey, if he can perform, he makes the team. If he doesn't perform, he shouldn't make the team. Now, you got to remember that St. Louis and, the, and this kind of area here, this is not an area that is real empathetic, by and large, to the so-called gay agenda. We tend to be kind of a socially conservative lot around here. A lot of religious folks around here. Catholicism is very big. Protestants uh, are well rep represented as well. There are certain small pockets around here for supporting the gay agenda, but there, it, it's not an overriding thing. This, this place is not like San Francisco or New York in that regard. And yet people here, totally cool with Michael Sam joining the team. There was no backlash. The media would like, like you to think there's some backlash. It's really not. The only backlash that's out there is maybe the media coverage of it, trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. And yeah, there was kind of an uncomfortable kiss on television, but hey, it's a live shot. I guess you can't avoid that. And, and even in that perspective, that's not so much a gay thing as it is. It's just uncomfortable to see unattractive people kiss. I mean, what's that, uh, what's that sitcom, the, the two fat people that live together? Mike and Molly? I don't want to see them kiss either, okay? But really, it's a reflection of where we are in life that even the most socially conservative people don't really have a problem with gay folks having jobs and, and performing and judging them on their performance. But we don't think that they need special treatment either. At the end of the day, people say that social conservatives need to tolerate those who are different from them. Well, as I look around the world, not just the Michael Sam situation, I see that we do that. We do it quite well. And that's consistent with Christian teaching, and by and large, we do it. But what we are not required to do, and what we should not be pressured into doing, is validating the lifestyles of people who choose to do that, or validating any other group of people in the world that 
uh, that performs actions that are uh, that are to the opposite of our teaching. We're under no obligation to do that. We will not do that. And think of this from a bigger perspective. Think of this. Think of this in a political perspective. Everybody wants to tell you the conservatives are against gays, but stop and think. Where's really the only place that you see that come into play politically? Well, okay, a lot of us are against gay marriage. That's true, and we oppose those kind of laws. We we're like, okay, let's not call what you do marriage. But by and large, outside of that. There's not much where there's opposition between conservatives and gays. There's really not much at all. And even on the gay marriage thing itself, even, even with that, a lot of us who are against gay marriage say, hey, let the states decide it anyway. And if some state wants to have it, I don't care. That should be good enough for most of you. But the fact that there's a small minority, a few of you out there, that are continuing to push and say, hey, it's not good enough to tolerate us, you have to validate us. That's where the line will not be crossed. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.